Hi well, guys, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Android on the iPhone 3G, an iPhone 2G, or an iPod Touch first generation. There are three main, yeah, three main things you will need for this. Two of them are things that are going to go on the iPhone. One of them is an operating system that is compatible with it. So first, you want to go get yourself VirtualBox. Is virtual box is the best for um, using Ubuntu to do this. So you can need a copy of Ubuntu, get it at Ubuntu.com, copy of virtual box, virtualbox.org. Obviously I'll obviously gonna put those in the description box. And this is gonna be in the description box as well. It's gonna be what you can use what you're gonna have to put on your iPhone to install Android and play around with your settings. It's a repository for Cydia. I've added it in my iPod so I don't have to wait for Cydia to open up on my iPhone. But other than that, this is where you're gonna start having it. I'm assuming you already have your um, your Ubuntu installed on VirtualBox. And I'll give you a, I'll give you the link for this, for this website. What it is, is it's got the files for the iPod Touch 2nd gen, 3rd gen, and I mean, the iPhone 1st, 2nd gen, 3rd gen, iPhone 2G, 3G, and this 1st gen iPod Touch. God. I'm using an iPhone 3G, so I'll go into there. It gives you the files for iDroid. 1.0.2 which is 2.2 Android and I'm not sure what 1.0 is I think it's 2.0 or something like that what you can do is you're going to extract it to get this folder I think I've copied the folders out of there but let's go have a look yeah, what you'll do is you open it you'll see a folder called iDroid and obviously it will have the stuff in there but I've made a We'll have a folder called Open iBoot. You make a folder on desktop called iDroid with capital D and copy that folder into there. Go into terminal which is applications, accessories, down to terminal. Get a lovely purple screen. That's your command. Best way to do it is hit CD in, go into that folder on the desktop, put iDroid and drag open iBoot in there, press enter, um, you're going to have these codes in the description box, from sudo onwards. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have your iPhone, I'm installing Android because mine messed up, I did something wrong. But you're gonna have to have it in restore mode. Hit that code in, put your password in, and it will put it into and it will put it into this, but it will have another one in the middle. You will have terminal in the middle, like this one. You'll get put into this. This is exactly like mine, it's got 3G. But what you're gonna use is these buttons to navigate up and down. Because all this is is an image put on your iPhone now. It's not actually installed. Don't be fooled. You can boot it up into Android like this, but it's kinda like being tethered. So you wanna actually install this to your actual device. So hit it once down and this is to select which one um, after you select which one but don't actually don't select yet just keep it in the middle one and write in this code because right after you press that you're going to quickly have to go up here in devices USB and connect the open iBoot uh, mode of iPhone into it and it will come up with errors but you have to keep pressing OK and stuff 
then press that code and then you'll see as a code comes up on here the computer will follow that code and keep coming up and up and then when they both say welcome to open iboot you write install and then that's it you're done like it, it will obviously take some time it says in a minute or two but it took me about five or six and it gives you this file in the apple folder that's your NOR backup in case anything goes wrong don't know how to use it they should definitely if you google it, I'm sure you find a way but after you've got OpenIBoot installed properly and you can turn off your device turn it back on and it'll be there you're done with the computer because the only reason you use a computer is for OpenIBoot then you add the repository which is apt.idroidproject.org and then have one file on there Called bootlace, you install that. Shouldn't take long. It's just its icon is a icon of a boot with laces, and when you yeah. stuff, it's reloading. Okay, should not done that. Reloading data shouldn't have put all those repositories in my iPod. But yeah, you just that's it, but I can't use it because it's installing. There's three stages of installing I think. That's its icon right there. Isn't it? Loading logo. But this is not compatible with this device. Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, did should have really tested it before I tried it. But when you open it, you get four menus at the bottom. You open to default on this one. This this one is if you want to, it's like a quickly go to Android or quickly go to console. This one installs Android, and this one sets up an auto boot. So what happens if you turn it on? Mine is you wait 30 seconds. If you wait 30 seconds, it will go straight to um, iPhone. You can set it to straight to Android, straight to console. You can disable it. It's all good. After this is done you see that there is a little eye here you tap that and it will have two options extract multi-touch firmware and download Wi-Fi firmware uh, yeah if you do not do these mm, well if you don't do Wi-Fi you can't turn Wi-Fi on nor use it if you don't do the, the multi-touch firmware I'm not sure but I I would do it because I remember when I firstly tried doing this. If you don't have the proper mod to touch firmware straight when you turn it on, it just crashes. But it doesn't crash to open iBoot, it just keeps it just goes to force close and it freezes. Then you have to do a, a hold down. Yeah. And then you turn it on and off that way. But other than that, that's pretty much how you install Android on my phone. After because when you're going to here, it says install, it searches for a new. And instead of having to uninstall it and reinstall it or patch up the files, all you have to do is just go here and press update when a new one comes up. So, and I'll have those links in the description box. And enjoy installing Android on your devices, people. And one more thing this does not work with iOS 4.1. It only works with 4.0.2 latest. So you you'll be lucky to get it working on 4.0.2, but this is 4.0, 4.1. Don't try it with 4.1. Just 
because OpenMyBoot Boot isn't compatible with 4.1 yet. I'll give you guys an update when it is, but not yet. So, links will be in the description box. See you next time.